The Italian Navy and the eventual Air Force both had a long history of naval aircraft experimentation, dating to before the First World War. During the war, much like other naval powers, Italy experimented with seaplane carriers, and this experimentation with aircraft at sea led to plans for full aircraft carriers to be converted from battleships in the 1920s and 30s. Still, for various reasons, nothing came of it. The quest for an Italian aircraft carrier continued, as some in the Regia Marina hoped for such a vessel to operate with the fleet and or to cover convoys to and from their African holdings. The need for such a vessel became evident during the early stages of the war in the Mediterranean as the British used their aircraft carriers with varying degrees of effectiveness, like during the Battle of Calabria or the Raid on Taranto. Taking it quickly back to the mid-1930s, there were plans to convert a liner, the Roma. This liner was taken to the shipyard in Genoa, and the conversion work began. Roma would soon become the Aquila, the Regia Marina's most complete attempt at an aircraft carrier. However, like the Graf Zeppelin in Germany, Aquila was never finished, in part because of her aircraft complement. The ship was damaged and then used as a block ship in Genoa, eventually being scrapped in the early 1950s. Still, the Regia Marina looked at other conversion prospects during the war, and we'll take a look at those as well. As I mentioned in the introduction, the Regia Marina had experimented with seaplane tenders during the First World War, notably the 1895 vintage British cargo freighter Quattro, where the ship's superstructure was removed and two canvas enclosed hangars were erected fore and aft of the mast and funnels, each able to accommodate four float planes or flying boats. Cranes lowered and retrieved the aircraft from the hangar's sides. The canvas could be fully retracted. A workshop was installed so the aircraft could be tended to while at sea. The remaining space was allocated to suit the needs of the aircraft, like fuel, ammunition, etc. Renamed Europa, she entered service in 1915 and continued to serve through the war and into 1920 when she was scrapped. This, along with the conversion of the Elba previously, was Italy's first real attempt at such a new and ambitious concept. In this, the attempt showed promise, with some hoping to continue the development of aircraft carriers into the 1920s. There was some promise even with the advent of the Washington Naval Treaty signed on February 6, 1922, which allowed the Regia Marina to build several aircraft carriers that didn't exceed a total of 60,000 tons. The Royal Navy had commissioned the world's first flush deck carrier, HMS Argus, in September 1918, and was hard at work at other conversions with the former Chilean battleship Almirante Cochrane, soon to be HMS Eagle, other conversions, and purpose-built carriers. Meanwhile, other powers involved in the treaty were working on conversions like the United States, Japan, or more critically to the Regia Marina, France. A conversion of a battleship was a real prospect for the Regia Marina. Two battleships could be converted into aircraft carriers. The incomplete Francesco Caracciolo, a dreadnought that was to be armed with 15-inch guns and displacing some 34,000 tons. Its conversion called for the installation of a flight deck running almost the entire length of the ship and a small island. The other possibility was the previously sunk dreadnought, Leonardo da Vinci, and since raised, where a similar conversion was proposed. Both these ambitious projects came to an abrupt end roughly at the same time the Washington Naval Treaty took place. Not due to the treaty itself, but because of outside factors in Italy, as the years of 1919 and 1920 were tumultuous times for the nation, and money was tight. So the Regia Marina's budget was lowered to pre-war levels. As a result, both conversion projects were scrapped, and so were the ships, Leonardo da Vinci in 1923 and Francesco Caracciolo in 1926. To take from German and Italian aircraft carriers of World War II by Ryan Knoppen and Douglas Diddley, Perhaps more detrimental to the Regia Marina's development of aircraft carriers than post-war financial concerns was the fascist political environment following Benito Mussolini's rise to power. The fascist leader, Italo Balbo, assumed control of the Italian Air Force, becoming the Undersecretary of State for the Aviation Ministry in 1926. Balbo had little experience in aviation matters before this. Still, he quickly fell under the influence of the strategic air power theories of Giulio De Witt particularly the potential role to be played by mass formations of bombers. After the Regia Aeronautica assumed control of the Navy's aviation squadrons in 1931, 
Balbo subsequently made it clear to the Regia Marina that it had no business in the development of aircraft carriers. The Regia Aeronautica would ensure the safety over the skies of Italy's Mediterranean Sea. The leaders of the Regia Marina largely accepted this idea, and some even claimed that Italy herself was an aircraft carrier in the Mediterranean as she could base planes out of Sardinia, Sicily, the mainland, and even roads in the eastern Mediterranean. Still, there were supporters of naval aviation within the Regia Marina who saw the potential such a vessel could have within the fleet, and throughout the 1920s and 30s, several proposals were created, none of which came to fruition with some interesting ideas like a cruiser-carrier hybrid. That's not to say the Regia Marina didn't continue to experiment during the interwar period. They had the Giuseppe Maraglia, a converted railway ferry turned into a seaplane tender, with the capacity to carry 17 aircraft, along with catapult-launched aircraft from the heavy and light cruisers. Still, the Regia Marina did not possess any aircraft carriers by the time the Second World War came around. However, their counterparts in the Mediterranean, the Royal Navy, did have several carriers in the Middle Sea, which in the early stages of the war were used extensively. For example, the carrier HMS Eagle was used at the Battle of Calabria in early July 1940 to limited effect, but still present. Then in November 1940 with the raid on Taranto, HMS Illustrious was used to great effect, sinking and or damaging the battleships Littorio, Caio de Willio, and Conte de Cavour. Still, during the battles, especially at the Battle of Calabria, the Regia Aeronautica was there, just not very effective. Taking from Augusto de Toro and Ermino Bagnesco in Italian battleships, Conte di Cavour and Duilio classes. In conclusion, both fleets had accomplished their respective missions, allowing their convoys to reach their destinations unharmed. On the Italian side, it was the first wartime test of air-naval cooperation and employment at sea the air arm. Results were disappointing and from certain aspects worrying. They go on to describe how reconnaissance was good, but the doctrine and execution of the air attack was less than ideal, with about 2,000 bombs dropped by 500 aircraft and only one hit. Taking the failures of the Regia Aeronautica at the Battle of Calabria into account, the disaster that was the raid on Taranto, and the proven capabilities of a naval air arm as demonstrated by the British, something had to change. We're taking it quickly back to the mid-1930s, there were plans to convert a liner, the Roma. This liner would be taken to the Insaldo Yards in Genoa, where it was to be converted into an aircraft carrier in July 1941. The first thing that was to be done in the conversion process was the complete removal of the ship's superstructure. The hull was rebuilt with a new arch stem, and the stern was modified. The ship would get new machinery fitted to it, as the Regia Marina intended the Roma to be a true fleet carrier and operate with the Regia Marina. And although the original machinery provided for a 22 knot top speed, that was not good enough. The boilers and shaft geared turbines came from two light cruisers, the Paolo Emilio and the Coneo Le Silla, as their production had been suspended in June. The Aquila would have eight boilers and four shafts with improved underwater lines, with a theoretical top speed of 30 knots which would have allowed the ship to operate with the Regia Marina's most modern vessels and to conduct air operations safely in most weather conditions. It's important to note that the ship was renamed Aquila in early 1942. The flight deck of the Aquila extended 15 meters over the ship's bow and extended 10 meters over the ship's stern. The island sponsored out on the starboard side of the flight deck, and on top of the island, there was a multi-level conning tower forward and a single large raked funnel aft. Bilge keels were put on either side of the ship to improve the stability and resistance to any underwater damage. As the Regia Marina continued to develop Aquila, they were assisted by their allies in the Kriegsmarine as they had some experience in the construction of aircraft carriers with their incomplete carrier Graf Zeppelin, in particular with catapults, elevators, and arrestor gears. They were willing to hand those particular parts over from the Graf Zeppelin's cancelled sister ship. Initially, the Insado Yard said they could complete the carrier in 12 months. However, Aquila was still sitting in a dry dock awaiting the installation of the German flight deck equipment in October 1942, and with material and equipment shortages, there were going to be delays, with hope she could be complete by July 1943. Hindering these efforts further were air attacks by the British in November 1942, which caused light damage to Aquila. 
she was taken out of dry dock and towed to a dock in the yard nearby the incomplete Cornelio Sila, which was covered with metal plate to make it look like the carrier, which proved effective, and near the end of April 1943, the ship was moored at a fitting out quay in the port of Genoa, where her machinery was finally completed. It was to be tested in September 1943. Due to the worsening war situation that June, it was decided to discontinue the fitting out of Aquila because components that were meant for the ship needed to go elsewhere to escort vessels. The major problem beyond the shortages with completing the Aquila was her air group, which was to consist of 38 Reggiani RE-2001 Falco II fighter bombers. Some already were converted for carrier operations by the Reggiani factory, with the addition of arrestor hooks and catapult couplings in the landing gear. Folding wings would not be provided in the modified version, which would have hindered the aircraft's movement and storage aboard the carrier. The factory was not willing to prioritize these aircraft over the needs of the Regia Aeronautica. There was some thought put into cooperation between the Air Force and Navy, however, nothing much came of that idea. Mussolini's Navy, a reference guide to the Regia Marina, 1930-1945 by Maurizio Brescia, in which he writes, The training of pilots and air crews had only begun in the summer of 1942, so the earliest she could have been ready for combat operations, had the armistice not intervened, would have been mid-1945. Because of that, it would have been difficult to get the aircraft carrier in operation. To go over the design of the Aquila, she displaced 23,350 tons standard displacement and 27,800 tons full load. She had eight boilers and four shafted geared turbines, producing 140,000 shaft horsepower, giving the ship a theoretical top speed of around 30 knots. Her armor varied between 60 and 80 millimeters near the ammunition storage, handling rooms, and aviation fuel tanks. Her theoretical armament would consist of eight 135mm 45 caliber guns in single mountings, 12 65mm 64 caliber guns in single mountings, and various light anti-aircraft guns. She was supposed to have the capacity to carry between 38 and 51 aircraft, with two German-designed catapults that were to be installed. Following the signing of the armistice in September of 1943, the Germans captured the vessel in Genoa where they began to dismantle the ship to gain any valuable parts, namely the electrical equipment and the guns that had been installed. The ship remained in place, being hit in June of 1944 by an Allied air raid, and in April of 1945, she was attacked by an Italian human torpedo, which caused even more damage. The hulk of the Aquila and other damaged ships were used to block the inner anchorage of the port of Genoa, where she was found by the Allies at the end of World War II. She was towed to La Spezia in 1949, and would be broken up between 1952 and 1954. Another conversion was begun from a passenger liner similar to the Roma the Augustus, which was also launched in 1926 but with diesel machinery. It was renamed to Falco and then to Sparviero. It was to be an escort carrier with a maximum top speed of 18 knots. Conversion work began in October of 1942, but work stopped in early 1943. The work stopped with only the superstructure being dismantled. On the 5th of October 1944, she was sunk by German forces to block the eastern entrance of the port of Genoa, and refloated in 1947. The Sparviero was immediately broken up. One more interesting proposal that came about later in the war was the conversion of the heavy cruiser Bolzano into a cruiser-carrier hybrid. Following her near sinking in August 1942 at the hands of the small submarine HMS Unbroken, Bolzano was beached off the island of Panaria north of Sicily, and after being patched up, she was towed to La Spezia for repairs in October. As early as October, design studies were drawn up for less aggressive repairs to Bolzano to save on labor and materials, through replacing the damaged boilers with less machinery. Another design study called for converting Bolzano into a hybrid warship, where the plans called for the removal of Bolzano's superstructure and armament forward of the aft funnel to be replaced with a flight deck with a track running down the center of it, which ended at two diagonally placed catapults installed in the ship's bow. It was intended to carry 12 aircraft, 10 lined up on the track, and 2 on either catapult. The plan also called for the removal of some of the ship's machinery to allow for cargo to be carried. Such was the need for escorting aircraft 
and for the Italian convoys to and from North Africa and other possessions in the Mediterranean, along with the need to carry supplies. This idea never got out of the early stages, and with the Axis surrender in North Africa in May 1943, it would never go anywhere. She was later sunk in La Spezia Harbor by the British using a British chariot man torpedo. Another Italian cruiser was proposed to be converted into an aircraft carrier, the Trieste, after she capsized in La Maddalena in 1943, where to quote Maurizio Brescia and Augusto de Toro in Italian heavy cruisers, Trento to Bolzano, the fate of the wreck of the Trieste was different and curious. The hull was raised from the sea bottom of La Maddalena in 1950 by the salvage company Mico Pari. Still upside down, it was towed to La Spezia and put into the basin to prepare for writing. The hull was then put up for sale at the end of the same year. At that same time, the Spanish Navy was considering a low-cost naval unit and was looking for hulls for the right size to enable it to build a light aircraft carrier. Attention was drawn to the hull of the Trieste, which despite having spent seven years underwater, was still in good condition. After a positive inspection by a com after a positive inspection by a commission of the Spanish Navy, the hull was purchased in May 1951 and towed to Cartagena the following June. But a change in leadership of the Spanish Navy led to reconsideration of the whole project and the conclusion that it would not be worth completing. She was eventually broken up that decade, and only small elements of the ship were reused. When it comes to Italian aircraft carrier development, I find this to be an interesting subject, and certainly something less well known than, say, German carrier development. It would have been interesting to see how Aquila would have been employed in the Middle Sea and a converted Bolzano. Let me know if you would like to see a more detailed video on Bolzano's conversion, or your thoughts on Italian aircraft carriers. Anyway, please remember to like and subscribe as it'll help the channel to grow. Until next time, my friends, have a great week.